This video was produced by the FAA Suspected Unapproved Parts Program Office. It deals with the use of parts involved in an aircraft accident. It does not address foreign manufactured parts, parts originating from foreign registered aircraft, or reusing parts of unknown origin. Regretfully, far too many accidents result in death or serious injury, with the aircraft rendered unrecognizable. However, in some instances, such as wind damage or accidents involving only certain sections of the aircraft, the hull loss may be considered total, but parts of the aircraft could still be usable. Occasionally, these parts and components are made available to the aviation industry as replacements. Use of these parts is often made attractive by virtue of their lower cost, but the purchaser or potential user may be unaware of all the hazards involved in their operation. These parts can be of questionable serviceability and possibly unable to perform their intended function. Compliance to the federal regulations, prudence, and common sense, along with erring on the side of safety, must prevail when dealing with parts involved in accidents. At the end of this video, and included in the shipping case, is a list of reference documents and related reading material. These documents will elaborate and more clearly define the terms used and give reference to the appropriate federal aviation regulations. Before we proceed any further, let's define some of the terms we will use during this video. Airworthy. In order for an airplane, a product, or a part to be airworthy, it must conform to its type design and be in a condition for safe operation. Type design. The drawings, plans, and methods and processes to which the airplane, product, or part was originally manufactured. Aircraft accident. An occurrence that involves death or serious injury or substantial damage to the aircraft. By substantial damage, we mean damage or failure which adversely affects structural strength, performance, or flight characteristics of the aircraft, which would normally require major repair or replacement of the affected component. Standard parts. Parts such as nuts and bolts, manufactured and conforming to an established industry or U.S. specification. For the purposes of this video, a certificated person is defined as a properly FAA rated and certificated mechanic, repair station, air carrier, manufacturer, or repairman. All parts involved in an accident must have some type of inspection and or work accomplished before they can be approved for return to service for the following reasons. Parts may have been subject to excessive heat, thereby affecting original strength or dimensions. All parts involved in a fire are almost always rendered permanently unserviceable, regardless of their rejuvenated appearance. Foreign or corrosive liquids can take their toll on aircraft parts, even if exposed to these liquids for a very short period of time. This includes salt water. Parts may have been deformed or subject to unknown or unmeasurable forces such as sudden stoppage that are impossible to detect by external visual inspection that could permanently render the part unserviceable. It is not contrary to federal regulations to reuse some parts involved in accidents. However, and we can't stress this point enough, the part must be subjected to a thorough and detailed inspection by a properly qualified person. If maintenance is required, it must be performed and documented in order to prove conclusively that it conforms to the requirements of Part 43 prior to approving the part for return to service. Section 4313 states that the person doing the work must use the methods, techniques, and practices prescribed in the current manufacturer's maintenance manual or in the manufacturer's instructions for continued airworthiness or any other methods, techniques, and practices acceptable to the FAA. However, there are exceptions for certain operators. Often, the manufacturer is silent on the issue of approving the part for return to service after an accident. This does not release the certificated person from taking prudent steps in ensuring the part meets its type design and is in condition for safe operation. For example, if a manufacturer does not publish guidance for returning parts to service after an accident, damage, or sudden stoppage, an effort should be made to contact a technical representative of the company for direction. 
the local FAA Flight Standards District Office, Manufacturing Inspection District Office, or Aircraft Certification Office may also be able to give assistance. In all cases, and in order to substantiate and give credibility to the work to be accomplished on the part, some type of written record should be made that is agreed upon by all parties. Throughout this video, a reasonable assumption is being made that the part is an approved part by virtue of being installed prior to the event on a type certificated aircraft registered in the U.S. In other words, the part is most likely properly produced and maintained and was not counterfeit or improperly altered. Documentation should be available even if the aircraft or engine was a total loss. What if you want to purchase a motor that was installed in the tail of an accident aircraft? The tail section appeared undamaged. What would be needed to get it approved for return to service? Well first, documentation should be obtained that would verify the part was previously installed on a type certificated aircraft. This documentation could be logbooks indicating the installation of the part on that particular aircraft, shop work orders, previous return to service tags, or any other document that ties that motor to the particular aircraft. With those documents, it could be reasonably deduced that the part met its type design since it was installed on a U.S. type certificated and registered aircraft. To satisfy the condition for safe operation requirement, it would be prudent to send the unit along with those documents to an FAA certificated repair station for an overhaul along with a description or possibly photos of the accident. With this information, the repair station should be able to perform the required inspections, replace the necessary parts, and accomplish the required tests. Then, if acceptable, approve the motor for return to service, thereby making it an airworthy part. However, if the motor is not acceptable, it should be considered scrap and appropriately disposed of. Now, would the purchaser need to know that the motor was involved in an accident? That wouldn't be necessary because a certificated person has approved the motor for return to service. Let's talk about a less complex part. How should a flight control be treated in the same scenario? Obtaining the documents to reasonably assure the part met its type design by virtue of being installed on a type certificated aircraft would remain the same. Determining the part is airworthy could probably be done in this case by an airframe and power plant mechanic opening all inspection panels using the inspection criteria published in the manufacturer's maintenance manual and possibly the structural repair manual. If no irregularities are found, the part could be approved for return to service by the A&P. Is traceability to the manufacturer a federal aviation regulation requirement? No, it is not a requirement. However, for life-limited parts, you must be able to determine their status, which is usually tracked by hours or cycles of operation. Normally, the records substantiating the total time or cycles will also tell the purchaser the origin of the part. For other parts, traceability to an FAA certificated person is normally acceptable, but there are exceptions. What if you have an invoice from an aircraft parts distributor with a signed paragraph at the bottom of the page that states the part was not in an accident and not subjected to excessive heat or stress? Is that sufficient documentation? Well, first off, who was the person who signed the statement, and what authority and expertise does that person have to make the determination? And secondly, what documentation was used to determine the validity of the statement, and why were they not included with the shipment? It would not be unreasonable to ask the distributor for further clarification and documentation. Is it a requirement to supply this information to the part purchaser? No, it is not. However, the federal regulations do require that only airworthy parts be installed on aircraft. Quite often you see trade publications advertising aircraft parts for sale as is. Isn't this illegal? It is not contrary to federal regulations to sell parts in an as-is condition. However, items purchased as such may not be acceptable for installation in type certificated products without further inspection or testing. Furthermore, it is often very difficult to determine if an as-is part meets its type design since there is no traceability. 
The Federal Aviation Regulations address the production, modification, and maintenance of parts and material intended for installation on aircraft products, but not the sale of those parts. It's also important to stress the opposite. Parts which are represented or advertised as being airworthy or FAA approved when in fact they are not could be fraud. If fraud is confirmed, it will be prosecuted. Finally, what about nuts and bolts from an accident aircraft? Can I reuse them? If the parts are standard parts, they possibly could be reused, providing there is no damage to the part or the finish. Of course, self-locking hardware such as fiber or plastic lock nuts, spring-type lock washers, and cotter pins should never be reused. We hope this video has helped you to understand when you can use parts that have been involved in an aircraft accident. At the FAA, safety is our mission. Make it yours. <laughs>